You can tell me if you're a computer person whether you think this is a good job. Hello and welcome to another Nihongo Gamer video. Super excited because for the first time in five years, I'm upgrading. Ladies and gentlemen, what you're looking at here is a computer called G Gear. I bought it at a shop called Tsukumo here in Japan. So if you are interested in buying a computer or if you've ever just been curious as to what it's like to buy a computer in Japan, hopefully this will be of use to you. Now we're going to be talking about how I chose this computer, why I chose this computer, also how I plan to use it on this channel, how much it costs and all of that good stuff. But first things first, let's get it out the box. Now inside this box is going to be a tower PC. Now you may remember that I purchased before on this channel a computer that was a laptop from a company called Alienware in 2017. And that has lasted me a good five years and I have massively expanded the various, like the variety of things that I do on this channel thanks to that one laptop. It's been amazing and it's handled almost everything I've wanted to do but it is slightly getting long in the tooth. So let's open up the, the computer and hopefully I won't break it because it does say on the side of the box don't turn it sideways which is exactly what I have done. Some bits of cardboard and it looks like yes I've got it upside down. Let's get this out of the box. Easily one of the largest unboxings I've ever done on this channel. The reason why I chose this particular spec of computer is because inside you can almost see it through the grill. It has a G, no that's not correct, an RTX 3080 which is a very powerful graphics card. It came out like a year and a half, maybe almost two years ago and I'm aware that maybe the 4000 series of graphics cards is coming out soon but I kind of don't care and also just need a computer right now. And just the economy right now and just the, the value of the Japanese yen right now, I just figured I could wait for new stuff to come out, but that doesn't necessarily mean that stuff is going to get cheaper. In fact, there are situations where various things are going to get more expensive just because of the, the value of the yen and just prices going up for all sorts of things. What you see here is the first time I've seen this computer. It is the G Gear Intel i7 Alder Lake processor, which I believe is 12th generation RTX 3080 on the inside, 32 gigabytes of RAM, two SSDs, it's got one terabyte in one drive and another terabyte in a second drive for whatever reason, maybe it's just cheaper to sell it that way. It's got one HDMI port and three display ports. I don't know if I can use all of them at the same time, but since I do have a three monitor setup, it will be nice to be able to use three different monitors with this and maybe I could just leave my VR headset plugged in all the time because one of the main reasons why I never use my VR headset is because it's just never plugged in. When I plug it into my laptop, because it's got a built-in display and it's also got HDMI out, it gets really confused. I kid you not, there are some times where I will reboot the computer 15 times and then have, without changing anything on the 15th reboot, it will just work. Now as you can see from the case, it is not too exciting, it is basically a black box with a bunch of components inside. Size-wise, I believe this is known as a middle ATX tower, that's what they call it in Japan, middle ATX. It does actually have an optical drive, I believe this is a DVD writer, it's not Blu-ray or anything. It's got two USB ports on the front, headphone jack, microphone jack, but I'm probably not going to use that because I've got my own audio interface. And then on the top it's got this weird design, I don't know what this is for, it's got rubber, not rubber padding all over the bottom. It's got three rubber strips partially on the top. Maybe you could like rest a drink here, which you really shouldn't do. From the outside of the case, this is not the computer you buy if you want to look cool and have a glow-in-the-dark PC with RGB and everything and sitting on your desk and very funky. This is basically a bog standard, try to get the components as cheaply as possible and no bells and whistles. All right, so if I just take the side plate off, to the side, you can check out the inside of the computer. You can tell me if you're a computer person whether you think this is a good job. I think there's really not that many fans in this computer, so I'm not planning on doing any overclocking, but even though I'm not overclocking, it is really hot in Japan, so I think maybe if I do any modifications to this computer, I might just want to add like six million fans and just make sure it's nice and cool. All right, so on the base of this RTX 3080, there are three fans and they're facing down. So what I think is happening is all the hot stuff is happening here on the top. It's got some heat sinks here in the middle and the fans, I don't know, maybe they're blowing the air downward? 
In terms of other fans on the computer, there's one main fan here at the back. It's got a fan here attached to the CPU, so underneath I believe the processor is in there. And I don't see any fans here at the front. Listen, I'm not going to pretend that I know everything about computers. I did a lot of research five years ago when I wanted to build my own computer, but I spec'd out all the parts here in Japan. I went into Akihabara with a camera, and I was actually ready to buy all the parts separately and build my own computer, but it was really expensive. Like, it ended up three to four hundred dollars more expensive than if I just bought the computer from a shop. Which is why this time, instead of really doing a lot of research to build my own, I just went straight to the shops, figured out which one was the cheapest and bought that one. Maybe if I learn a lot about computers from owning this one and maybe modifying and all that, maybe I will be able to do a computer build video in the future. The only thing that does concern me right now is that there is a PCI slot right beneath the RTX 3080 right here. So if this is the card, these are the heat sinks, and these are the fans, and I presume they're blowing heat down, then if I put any other devices in here, if I put like a PCI card here that, I don't know, expands USB slots, it's gonna have hot air blowing right on it, and also this card is gonna end up not getting its heat dissipated away. I don't know, I'm gonna have to figure out more stuff about PC building. If you're interested in the motherboard, it is an ASRock B660 Pro RS. Really what I wanna talk about is choosing a PC in Japan. It is often more expensive to build your own computer. I tried specking all the best parts at the cheapest possible places, I could buy them, and when I would look at the pre-built places that had basically the same parts, it always ended up to be cheaper to just buy it from the shops. Now, if you're not going to a brick and mortar shop to just buy one from the, the usual places like Yodobashi Camera or Softmap, there are a few places that seem to specialize in computers, and the ones that I found are called Dospara, Tsukumo, and mouse computer. Dospara sells a lot of computers by a brand called Galeria. Skumo sells a lot of gaming computers called G-Gear, which is what this is. And the other one was mouse computer, which sells a, comp I think it's called G-Tune or D-A-V. One of them's for like video producers and one of them's for gamers. So I ended up looking at all three websites and just checking out which one was the cheapest that had an RTX 3080 in it. Now honestly, given the type of game that I play, which is mostly fighting games, but also a little bit of VR, it's not entirely essential that I have an RTX 3080, but I thought it would expand the number of things that I could do with the channel in the next five years, because a lot of the stuff I ended up doing with my laptop PC, the Alienware R3, I wasn't 100% sure what I was going to do with it, and because I chose a good spec laptop, and because it was a laptop, there were a lot of things that I could do. I could actually take it off my desk, bring it to a studio, and do other stuff there. And the reason I felt quite happy buying a desktop tower PC this time was because I still have my laptop. The only thing it's really struggling with is the newer games at like the highest graphics settings, running Steam VR through something like a Quest headset, you can't really use a GTX 1060, you need like slightly a grade above that. There's all sorts of reasons why you might want to choose like a stronger graphics card, but really I just wanted to future-proof myself for at least the next few years. Now you're running at different price ranges here, but in Japanese yen, you're looking at something like a 3060 or a 3070 for 200,000 yen, and if you want a 3080, the prices start at about 280. Yen. And at the time of making this video, 280,000 yen in US dollars is $2,050. Pretty sure you can get it cheaper in the West. But from all the websites I looked at, and I also looked at the Yodobashi cameras and Softmap websites as well, I could not find a computer with an RTX 3080 for cheaper than roughly 280,000. Now as for the process of actually ordering the computer, you choose the main model you want, so it has like the base price, which was $2,000, and then you can spec up and down various parts in the computer. In fact, you can't really spec down anything, but you can spec up all the stuff. Double the amount of RAM if you want, you could add extra SSDs into it if you wanted. You can add an aftermarket cooler for the CPUs instead of just using the bog standard Intel one that's included. You can add Wi-Fi to it. This computer is LAN only because I couldn't really be bothered to add Wi-Fi to it. You can upgrade the DVD drive to Blu-ray. You can have a higher grade of power supply. This one is 80 plus gold. So you can change those various things and make the computer more expensive up to like, I don't know, five, six, seven hundred dollars more expensive than the base price. But really, all I wanted was this graphics card, this processor, and for it to just 
work. It literally arrived in three days from pressing the button, order now. And really, that's all there was to it. The only other thing was that if you are buying with a credit card and you don't usually buy things for $2,000 on your credit card, then the first time you click the order button, you'll get this like big red message that says, whoa, your credit card company is not happy about this. And you actually have to phone, like buy voice, actually, that's not true. I did AI chat with my credit card company and they were like, oh, you want to spend $2,000? Sure, we'll open it up, give us an hour. So I had to like wait an hour, went back on the website and I was able to make the purchase. Anyway, before we continue, I'm getting a little bit nervous about my spit from my mouth going into the computer and making all the components wet. So I'm just going to put this back onto the computer as a, a shield. But before I end this video, I just want to talk vaguely about how I plan to use this computer. So like I said earlier, when I bought the Alienware laptop, I knew that I wanted to get into various PC gaming things. I wanted to enjoy more of the stuff that's available on Steam. And quite frankly, I ended up doing 50 times more stuff with my PC than I ever expected to. My Alienware laptop has become the central hub of all the content creation that I do. The only thing I don't use the laptop for is editing, and because editing on a, on a, I've got an M1 MacBook Air, it doesn't get hot at all, it's super portable, and ed edits are super fast, and the exports are even faster. But apart from the editing process, everything I do really does revolve around my laptop. I play games on it, I stream on it, I record stuff on it. Right now I'm recording directly through this camera, through a capture card, into my PC and OBS because then I can choose whatever bit rate I want to record at, what frame rates I want to record at, you know, whatever camera I use, I'm just completely free to use overlays and all sorts of setup things on the laptop on using OBS instead of depending on whether this camera has that frame rate available. It's just easier to record directly to the PC and then I don't need to take the SD card out and then transfer the files or anything that takes forever. But like I mentioned earlier, it's also easier to choose a desktop PC if you still own the laptop because if I do need to go somewhere, maybe like bring a laptop to a friend's house that week so we can play some fighting games there, or do a live stream from a studio somewhere else, then I still have my laptop available. But that brings me to the second point, and that's that this computer now becomes my second computer. I haven't actually decided how I'm going to use it, but it is entirely possible to use this as the gaming machine, and now just using the laptop to do nothing but recording and streaming. And it certainly has enough power to do recording and streaming, but what it doesn't have enough power to do, the laptop, is streaming and play the game at the same time. And even if it can, it has to play the game at like medium settings. But then when I add like a second camera so that I can, I don't know, show you the controller that I'm playing with, I can actually have like a camera pointed at my hands and show you the controllers that I've recently unboxed. That's when the computer really starts to suffer because it's like I need to run your audio effects, I need to run your graphics for the video game, I need to run like two cameras that are both running from capture cards, stream all that data to Twitch, or I need to record that stuff to file. Honestly, the laptop was just not quite handling all of that stuff at the same time. But I haven't 100% decided how I want to do it because it's entirely possible with the amount of power in the computer that it would just be easier to play the game and stream off this. And then if it starts to get long in the tooth and it's like I can't really handle like a high spec 3D game and also stream at the same time, then maybe I could consider making this the game machine and just have HDMI into a capture card and then have it stream through the laptop. But one third reason for choosing a stronger graphics card is that unfortunately with the laptop, the GTX 1060 just wasn't quite enough to run Quest through a cable. Now, if you've been following this channel, you know I already play Steam VR games through my HTC Vive headset, but I am interested in getting into this stuff on the Quest 2 headset because it runs at a very low price. It has recently gone up in price, but it is a very low price and you can run wireless or wired VR through Steam VR into the Quest 2 headset and it runs at a good refresh rate and it's got higher resolution per eye on the Quest 2 compared to the Generation 1. So I keep pointing at it, it's over there but you can't see it. But the Vive set is Generation 1 hardware and although it still works really really well, it's not the it's not as high resolution as Quest 2 which you can get for dirt cheap. And I am quite curious to see how Quest 2 handles wireless VR because I have heard that you can stream without a cable at all as long as your PC can handle streaming VR content wirelessly to a Quest 2. Again, laptop couldn't do it, but now that I've got an updated graphics card, this is 
two generations ahead and also just a higher tier of graphics card than my laptop, I think it can now handle it. Now the truth is, I think the GTX 1060 can handle streaming VR to a Quest 2 headset, but not the laptop version. The laptop version is a 3 gigabyte GTX 1060, but I think if you want to run a 1060 into a Quest 2, you need a 6 gigabyte one. But essentially, that's it. That's why I bought the computer, that's how I chose the computer, that's how much the computer costs, and also how I plan to use it on the channel. So. Just wanted to share the unboxing process with you. Do look forward to all the new stuff that I'll hopefully be able to do with this new computer and potentially even a two computer streaming setup. Not 100% sure if I'm gonna do that, but the possibilities really are endless and I'm really excited about implementing this PC into my studio setup. But tell me, are you a desktop computer user? Did you build your own or did you buy one from a company that allows you to customize the inside parts? Are you interested in PCs in Japan? Are you interested in just PCs even though you haven't bought one yourself? Let me know in the comments section below. I would love to get conversations started about PC stuff because now that I have all the power, all I have to do is choose all the fun stuff that I can do. Basically, I'm gonna go on Steam and just buy a bunch of games that I couldn't really run before. All I really want is to be able to turn it on once and for my Vive to just work. If I have to reboot my Vive 15 times to make it work, I will consider this PC purchase a bit of a failure. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll most likely be using this computer to stream or to play games on stream on my Twitch channel, so be sure to check that channel out and follow if you haven't already. You can follow me at Nihongo Gamer on Twitter and you can join us on the Nihongo Gamer Discord if you want to meet other like-minded individuals who are interested in all the content that you see here on the Nihongo Gamer channel. That's all for now. I'll see you in the next Nihongo Gamer video and or stream.